Okay, starting in on chapter two of night now. Uh, the goal here is to learn how to solve problems about motion in a straight line, like the speed train is going along a track which is quite straight. So uniform motion is a motion that has a constant speed. So if you're driving your car perfectly steady 60 kilometers an hour, this means you change your position by 60 kilometers for every time interval of one hour. So you have uh, equal displacements over any successive equal time intervals. So if you look at the motion diagram, all the dots are the same distance apart from each other. And an example of uniform motion would be riding your bike over level ground uh, without speeding up or slowing down. If you make a plot of your position, which might be x along a straight line, versus your time, t, uh, that's called a position versus time graph. And the average velocity is the slope of this graph. So the slope is rise over run, so uh, you would take delta x is the rise, divided by delta t is the run. Let's consider uniform motion of an object. So what we plot here is x versus time. x on the vertical axis, time on the horizontal axis, and this green line represents the x position of the object as a position, as a function of time. So at time equals zero, it's at this position x sub i, initial position, and as it goes on, there is a slope, v sub x, which is any little delta x divided by delta t, and that's positive. Now recall, if you have a plot of y in the, on the vertical versus x, and there's some slope m and y-intercept b, the equation is y equals mx plus b. Well, similarly, uh, for this case, we have uh, x is the position at some time t is equal to the slope, v sub x, times the time, t, which is the horizontal axis, plus the y-intercept, which is x sub i. And another way of writing that is uh, x is equal to the initial x position plus v sub x times t. Okay, I'd like to quickly go over some vocabulary here. So uh, we have distance, displacement, speed, and velocity. So the way it goes is distance is a scalar quantity. So the distance something travels doesn't include anything about direction. It's always a positive number. The displacement is like the vector version of distance. So it includes uh, direction. And displacement equals the final position minus the initial position. Okay, so similarly, speed is a scalar quantity. Speed doesn't, uh, doesn't include direction, and it's always positive. Whereas velocity is like the speed with a direction. So velocity is a vector. Often when we consider a motion in one dimension, we specify the direction of the velocity with the plus or minus sign. So plus would mean uh, the velocity is directed towards the right sometimes and minus towards the left. Or if you're talking about vertical motion, sometimes plus means up and minus means down. But you have to define how you're going to use your plus or minus sign to specify direction. Okay, so if an object that is speeding up or slowing down, that's not uniform motion, and so the position versus time graph is not a straight line. We can still figure out average speed between any two uh, points in time by just uh, finding the slope of the straight line connection between two points on the position versus time graph. But if we want to know the instantaneous velocity, what we can do is take the average velocity and take a limit as the delta t you use gets smaller and smaller. So uh, v sub s instantaneous is the limit as delta t approaches zero of delta s divided by delta t. And that's called ds by dt. Instead of deltas, these triangles, you use lowercase d. Example, let's show the motion diagrams and position graphs of an accelerating rocket. So you've got a rocket starting out uh, at, the, at the ground and it's going upwards and it's accelerating as it goes. 
So if you plot y, distance above the ground as a function of time, you get this curved line, 1, 2, 3. So if you look at uh, a zoom in around point 2, at maybe 3,000 frames per second, then for a very, very short time around point 2, uh, the graph is nearly a straight line. And so you can take a delta t, you can take a delta y, and find what the average velocity is for a very, very, very small time, t. Okay. And that turns out to be the slope of a tangent line to the graph at that point 2. And that would be the instantaneous velocity at, point, at time 2. So as delta t gets smaller and smaller, the average velocity reaches a limiting value called the instantaneous velocity. In calculus, this is called the derivative of position with respect to time. Uh, graphically, delta s divided by delta t is the slope of a straight line, and in the limit, you have uh, the slope of a tangent to the position versus time graph at a time t. So v sub s, instantaneous velocity, is uh, the slope of a position versus time graph at a time t. Okay, let's do a little uh, calculus here on the side. When we say dx by dt, this is the derivative of x with respect to t. So if uh, the function x as a function of t is of the form x equals c times t to the power m, where c and n are both constants, then there's a rule that the derivative dx by dt is equal to n times c times t to the power n minus 1. So you bring down the exponent and multiply, and then you subtract 1 from that exponent. If x is a constant, then uh, the derivative is, uh, is 0. So let's do an example. Suppose the position of an object is given by x equals 2 times t squared, with t in seconds. Question A is what is the velocity v sub x, and B is what is the velocity of the object at t equals 3 seconds. So where we find velocity v sub x is its dx by dt. So that's going to be d by dt of 2 times t squared. So that's of that uh, form that we know how to do it. So if you bring down the 2, 2 times 2, and then you subtract 2 minus 1. So v sub x equals uh, 4 times t to the power 1, or just 4 times t. So that's the answer to a. And then if we have a specific time, uh, 3 seconds, then v sub x at 3 uh, is equal to 4 times 3. So it's going to be 12. And the units of velocity are meters per second. OK, next up, I want to talk about acceleration. So imagine you've got a Volkswagen Beetle and a Porsche, and you want to see uh, which one can get up to 30 meters per second in, in the shortest amount of time. Now here we have a table, uh, stopwatch times, 0, 0 0.1 seconds, 0 0.2 seconds, and the instantaneous velocity of the Porsche and the Volkswagen are shown at all these times. So after 0.4 seconds, Porsche is going at 2 meters per second, and the Volkswagen is still only going at 0.8 meters per second. So and eventually, they, if you plot them, they both do get up to 30 meters per second. So neither car is faster, because they're both going the same speed at the end. But we know that the Porsche gets up to that 30 meters per second in a lot shorter time. So we say that its acceleration is greater. So the acceleration of a, here's a plot of velocity, instantaneous velocity versus time. Acceleration is the slope of this graph. And for the Porsche, for example, it gets up to 30 meters per second in only 6 seconds, so that's 5 meters per second per second. So the SI units of acceleration are meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. If the rate of change of uh, velocity is high, that's the high acceleration. So acceleration measures how quickly or slowly an object's velocity changes. 
the average acceleration over a time interval delta t is delta v sub s, so the change in instantaneous velocity, divided by the change in time. If you make a graph, then acceleration is the uh, slope of the velocity versus time graph. Acceleration, like velocity, is a vector quantity, so it has magnitude and direction. Okay, so here are plots of position, which Knight calls s, velocity, v sub s, and acceleration, a sub s, for two different kinds of motion. So these graphs on the left are uniform motion at constant velocity. So the position versus time graph is a straight line. The slope of this straight line is a constant velocity. So that's a, a constant versus time is a horizontal line. And the acceleration is zero. So for uniform motion, the acceleration is zero. If you have motion with constant acceleration, then the position versus time graph is this parabola. Okay, it's a curved line. And the slope, as a function of time, is a straight line. And so the slope of the velocity is now constant, so the acceleration is a horizontal line. And there's three uh, equations of constant acceleration. The first one uh, comes for if we know an object's uh, velocity at some initial time t to be v sub i, and we know that it has constant acceleration, then we can find its velocity at a later time, v final equals v initial plus a times delta t. And that's the first equation of constant acceleration. The second equation comes uh, from when we want to find the position, final position, as a function of the initial position uh, and the initial velocity and the acceleration at the time. So the way this works is we actually use a little more calculus, uh, which uh, the textbook goes into, which tells you that if you want to find position uh, and you know velocity, you take the integral of a velocity of velocity versus time. And what that means is you take the area of under the velocity versus time curve. So here's an object. Uh, we know velocity starts at v sub i, ends at v sub final, and over this time delta t. Well, the how far it traveled is equal to the area under this graph, and that's the area of this triangle plus the area of this rectangle. So that's what this equation is showing you here. Uh, final position is the initial position plus the area of the rectangle, which is the initial velocity times delta t, plus the area of the triangle, which is one-half uh, a and, uh, times delta t squared. That's the second equation of constant acceleration. And the last one is if we know uh, an object's initial velocity at some position, and we want to find uh, the final velocity at some after it travels some delta s, then we can use this equation. The final velocity squared equals the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration times delta s. And here's those three equations of constant acceleration.